Hello folks, Sam from the Giant Tortoise Farm and today uh, as an informational video I want to talk about freezing to death. Yeah, yeah, freezing to death. Unfortunately, I'm hearing a lot of bad stories around the country, people losing their Aldabras, especially larger Aldabras, because we've had this cold snap, it's gone around the country and quite frankly, you know, people aren't prepared for it, they haven't thought of all of the different possibilities and the best way to defend yourself against having your animals freeze to death. So I want to take you through one of my buildings and what I'm thinking about, how I'm approaching it, the technology that I use in hopes that uh, you folks can use it on your farms, in your houses, in your huts for your tortoises. So obviously I'm here in Florida. I don't get very cold. We were record breaking. I've lived here 40 years. We had a record breaking. I don't know. We hit 35, 36 degrees. And, you know, that's cold enough that they will freeze to death at 36 degrees. So, um... I guess without further ado, let me take you inside and take a look at the technology. Okay, welcome folks inside my uh, Aldabra. And we heat this hut with these brooder lamps. So uh, the brooder lamps, as you can see, are set high. The house is high because if your animals are about this high, you don't want to get much closer, 30 inches or so, from that heat lamp because you will burn the tops of their shells. They get scars. In the beginning, sometimes it's not uh, visible, but in fact, you've burnt the skin underneath that shell because they'll just sit there underneath the heat. So you've got to have good height. And again, this is an elect electrical setup. This is about 100 square feet in here, and we're using about 25 uh, square feet per 250-watt uh, lamp. And that brings us from about 40 degrees to about 65 degrees. So that's the way that I deal with uh, heating the hut. Now, you've got to think about, and a lot of folks in Texas have gone through this, where the grid goes down, now you don't have electricity got to have a backup plan. You can't just rely that if the electricity goes out, your animals are going to freeze to death. So here's a backup plan. Now this is a heater. This is a, a, is called a, um, a top heater. These things are inexpensive, 135 bucks. They could heat the inside of this building. You wouldn't believe how they could heat the inside of this building. I would have to turn only one head and put it on low. Now, this is a device, what I've used before, is I've hung it from the ceiling and in such a way that it kind of aimed down a little bit. You can't get it too far off center. And you could heat this house, heat this house with gas. Now, I believe they make smaller ones. I'm going to look for a link for those folks that you can have a smaller gas propane heater that you hang from the ceiling to heat in an emergency. That gas lasts a long time and it works real well. And I've used it for years and because of the efficiency of the way this design is, they actually can breathe it and it's not harmful to them. So in, in th this, is, this is the technology. So I have a two layer system for, for heating if something goes wrong. Also, we use here a fire alarm detector. In case something goes wrong in here, this fire alarm is actually in a network and it's linked to all of the other fire alarms and all of the other huts and inside the house. So if that fire alarm goes off, then all of the fire alarms, in the, even in the house, will go off. And unfortunately, it doesn't tell me which, which, which house has the fire. Uh, but, you know, you can always come out and, and check. So I recommend using a fire detector. It's very important. And also, I think there's some over here on the door. We have some other technology I want to share with the folks is this is an Accurite temperature humidity sensor. So has a, a, a nice app that works from your cell phone uh, and it, it gives you alerts. You can see the historical weather patterns so you know if it was 40 degrees outside and you know what time, what temperature was going on at what time inside your environment. So another thing that I want to point out is some folks don't realize that the tortoises are not necessarily going to sit under the lamps. So we've had some disasters where people did not have the entire area heated. Only part of it was heated. And they thought that the Aldabras would sit under those lights. But the Aldabras didn't sit in those lights. They sat on the edges and they froze. So again, most of this freezing stuff is happening, unfortunately, to people that have older animals, bigger animals, because they've got to be kept outside. It's not like a four or five inch animal that you can just take inside. So you've got to be ready. 
you know, I have that Accurite sensor. I'm going to give you a little a picture of it. It's inexpensive. It gives you, it, it tells you real time what the temperature is. We use the smoke detector in case, God forbid, something goes wrong. Uh, we properly space out these bulbs so that there's heat in the whole area, no matter where the animal goes. And make the door secure. Lock that door. Don't rely on that you're going to use some sort of freezer strips or plastic strips and you're going to hope the animal stays inside. In these critically low temperature areas, you've got to know they, 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 can't, they can't get out. And you've got to test it. You should test how hot it really is in here. Take a cinder block or two, put it on the floor, and you can stick it under the light and you can measure that temperature with your, with your um, laser thermometer. That's what I do. So I know the middle is hot. I know the sides are hot. The whole area is hot. So another thing that we also employ is a ring camera, real simple. You can even just do it on a temporary setup where I take that ring camera and take it and you can put it out in your hut. They're about 70 bucks. You get a nice app on the phone. You can see, you can see um, historically what's gone on. You can check the animals. You'll notice at night they'll always move a little bit. They'll move a foot. They'll move a, a limb. So you know that they're doing okay. So yeah, use, use, the, use a, a security camera. And uh, as an addition of, of creating this layered type of security system so you can really protect your animals in those, in those really cold areas. And even if the grid goes down, you've got a backup plan about how you're going to deal with it. That's a wrap, folks. I hope you liked that video. Take care, everybody. And please, please uh, take the time to look at your environment and, and think about how you can improve this winter. It's getting worse. The temperatures are getting worse. Take care, everybody. Please subscribe.